I want to end this segment talking about some peculiarities of aggregation. And um, <clears throat> remember that when we have um, a group by an aggregation, um, we'll start with the relation. So if I have R A comma B and uh, let's use A comma B comma C and I want to do an aggregation of A of R, I cannot do this. Okay. <clears throat> so this will be equivalent to saying select um, A comma B from R group by um, A. Okay. Let's look at Postgres. Um, <clears throat> so let's start from R. Oh, oh, I have it here. So um, if I write this query and I do select A comma B from R group by uh, A, it will tell me that B is not in the group by. And if I add B, then uh, it will probably give me an unexpected result. And uh, because if we inspect again R ordered by um, A, we have two potential values of B. So this query is non-deterministic, and that is why SQL uh, Postgres refuses to compute this query. But let's try this query in, <clears throat> in SQLite. And I want to really show in this video the differences between the dialects. And uh, so uh, let's look at the table. Select start from R, and uh, my schema is the same as, as in the other one. I have three attributes, all of them integer. So a schema um, R, that's my table. And uh, But for example, um, this operation is invalid. Well, in Postgres, I can do table R. The SQLite doesn't like it, it doesn't like um, table R, which is a shame because it's easier to write. Right? Okay, let's write the, the same the same um, aggregation a comma b from r group by a. It actually computes it, and it gives me apparently the first tuple that defines. So if I again inspect um, table r, so select star from R order by A. So notice that <clears throat> I have two tuples for value of one and it chose to give me the B of the first one. And for the second one, it gave me, well, there's only one, okay? So in this case, <clears throat> there's no ambiguity. So SQLite is willing to compute a value that Postgres refused to calculate, okay? And it will simply ch randomly choose one of the tuples. Why do I say randomly? Is because depending on how the result is calculated, depending on uh, the way that the instance of the relation is stored in the disk, I might get different results today than tomorrow, even if the database, if, even if the relation has not changed has not changed in terms of the tuples in it. For example, tonight it might run some um, cleaning up of the disk space, move tuples around, and tomorrow I might get a different result. So that's actually not very good, and uh, because it means that I will get two different results for exactly the same query without my database having changed at all. So that's why the standard doesn't allow it. But, there's some cases where this doesn't sound such a bad idea. Okay. <clears throat> Let me do the following in here. So we know that we cannot do this. Let's alter table R at primary key A. I'm trying to add to the table R let me look at the schema of R, a primary key A. And it tells me, oh, well, you're in bad luck because um, the value equal to one is duplicated. Hmm. So let's, let's look at the table again. 
let's update that value. So let's update our set a equal to, uh, let's make it two where b is equal to eight. So I'm going to change this value to a, <clears throat> a uh, two, okay? So let's look at the table again. So now all the a's are unique. So let's add the primary key, okay? So now it allow me to do it. So now my relation R has a primary key, which is <clears throat> A, and, um, and these are the values. So let's run my query again. Remember, this query was invalid before. Let's see what happens now. Now it actually works. Now Postgres says, huh, now I know that the value of A is unique. If the value of A is unique, that means that B is unique. There's only one value for B. So therefore this query is valid. So this becomes valid, is valid. If the attribute A functionally determines the value of B. Okay. So in my table R, I know that A implies B and A implies C. If this is true, then this square is valid. Because for every unique, for every value of A, there's only one potential value of B, okay? So there's a, spe a special case where this query actually works. Now, if we go back to our database of um, students, um, select star from students. The primary key of this is SID. <clears throat> so I can say select SID comma um, a name from students group by SID. Okay, and it will work. It will work for any attribute that is functional dependent. So that means that it will also work for H. Okay. Because both SID, sorry, sorry, both name and age are functional dependent on SID. Okay. So there's a specific case where this actually works. And uh, and this, what I find interesting about this is that it starts to link our con the concepts that we learned in the previous chapter of the book with the concepts we're learning now and the queries that we're writing, okay? And um, <clears throat> I find this query to be frequently useful, and uh, but then we have to be careful whether we have this functional dependency or not, okay? <clears throat> and I think that that concludes our content for relational algebra and SQL. I think that now we have, yeah, we have now all the uh, all the operations that we need, okay? And um, that should be sufficient to do the assignment. And will allow you to write very, very complex queries in your future career as SQL uh, developers, okay? Okay, so that's all for this one.